Welcome to the Having It All podcast, the show about what it takes to live an abundant, loving life. My name is Matthew Bivens, and each week I'm helping you get out of your head so that you can truly have it all. Let's do it. What's going on, everybody? Matthew Bivens here, and I want to start off by just saying that there's going to be a little bit of language in today's episode. So if you're driving with ears that you don't want to hear certain colorful words, I recommend you try a different episode because this is not the one to listen. Today, I just want to I just want to share some some truth, some real truth about the journey of discovering who you are, fulfilling your potential, tapping into greatness, inspiring yourself, inspiring others, being the most badass version of yourself that you can be, being true, being authentic, and honoring yourself. I want to share one of the consequences that you might experience when you make that decision. And really, it just comes down to to a, a, a statement that I'm experiencing right now, like to the nth degree. And it's a beautiful thing. Okay, I'm going to stop talking in abstracts. All right. So the only time that it matters, the only time that it matters that you are playing for greatness, playing for healing, playing for growth, you know, that you're striving for those things, the only time that those things truly matter is when you have to prove it. When you have to walk your talk. That's the only time that it matters. It doesn't matter when you're journaling and you're saying, you know, I want to be like this or I want to shift this in my life. It doesn't matter when you're confiding in a friend or when you're, you know, speaking it to a group and sort of putting it out there. Those things are great. You know, I think they're they're wonderful. They're great practices. However, it's when the rubber meets the road that you truly make those strides in the direction towards becoming the person that you want to become. And I say that because right now, It's just this beautiful example from the universe, an opportunity for me personally to walk my talk, to walk my talk. And, you know, I'll give, I'm going to give a little bit of, of insight into my situation because I think a lot of folks out there are going to be able to learn from it um, or just take something from it. And then I'm also going to share a few examples really that help to just hammer this point home. Because it's a, it's a very, very important thing to just be aware of, you know. And I'm not saying that the consequences of choosing a life of health and healing and transformation and choosing to, to be self-actualized or choosing all of those things. I'm not saying it always results in pushback, that it always results in, you know, people wanting to challenge. But many times it does. Many times it does. So let me just jump into my situation. For I don't know how many years I have, I grew up being a family center type of person. I grew up really attaching my emotions onto the, you know, the the coattails of those people that were closest to me. Most of the time it was family. As I got older, it became relationships. It became girlfriends and things like that. I would almost always just really hold on to them. And as they went up, I went up. As they went left, I went left. As they went right, I went right. And you get sucked into that roller coaster. And I experienced that for many, 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 many years. It wasn't until, you know, reading a book like Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, where Stephen Covey really outlines what it looks like to be spouse-centered, what it looks like to be family-centered, what it looks like to be money-centered, versus what it looks like to be principle-centered, it wasn't until reading a book like that, getting around other people who've read books like that, and, and that, that I started to see that there was another option for myself, that I didn't have to experience all the time the emotional roller coaster of being emotionally dependent on somebody else, right? So many years ago, I started on my own journey, you could say, my own path to detaching myself away from, you know, from, from that, th- those, those people who I was so dependent on and really stoking the fires within me of living a principally centered life, of understanding and, and aligning with those truths and using those truths 
to govern my decision making as opposed to using my emotions or the emotions of other people to dis- to to govern my decision making and that has been a humbling journey for me and a difficult one in many ways and at many times and so right now here I am years into this years into the, in this practice and you know I continue to tell myself and and those in my my inner circle that you know I'm playing to be principally centered and then boom the holidays come around right and family wants to spend time together for the holidays and I'm presented with an opportunity to choose to choose stepping into a scenario that doesn't align with me, doesn't align with me being principally centered, but it aligns very well with me being family centered. And so I'm, I'm presented with this opportunity. It has to do with Thanksgiving. You know, it's early November right now. Thanksgiving is a, a couple of weeks away. And so I had this opportunity to choose to go back to how I used to operate, to how I used to operate in that family center, doing things because it's what you're supposed to do as the oldest brother, as the only male sibling, you know, as the only male child. It's what you're supposed to do to be a good son. It's what you're supposed to do. Versus looking at those principles that I have chosen to help govern myself, help govern my life. You know, understanding things like for every action, there's a consequence. You know, everything is energy. That's one of the principles. Everything is energy, right? And looking at those things and saying, hmm, okay, if I make this decision, if I make this decision to go on this trip with my family for Thanksgiving, is that is that aligning with principle? Is that being principally centered or is that being family centered? And without going into so many details, because I could do a very long episode on just this scenario in and of itself, I came to my own conclusion that being principally centered for me was not to choose to go on this trip. So... You express that, you know, I express that to my family and boom, immediate backlash. And I go back to that statement I made at the beginning, right? The only time it matters is when you have to prove it. The only time it matters that I say that I'm principally centered is when all of the outside forces, is when my family are wanting me to go left, wanting me to go right, wanting me to waver. Yet I decide to stay true to myself regardless of the consequences, regardless of what happens. That's the only time it matters. And so it's just this, this, like I said, a beautiful example that I get to share with you. And it's a beautiful opportunity for me to rep what I'm about. Because I know in, or I believe, you know, I don't want to say I know things because I'm constantly learning new things. I'm constantly discovering new things. So I believe and I understand right now that there's going to be an impact from my decision. And I'm experiencing it. Boy, am I experiencing it. You might even hear my phone buzzing in the background because the text messages are are coming in fast and furious. The phone calls are coming in fast and furious. The emotions are coming in fast and furious. The guilt trips are coming in fast and furious. The attempts at manipulation are coming in fast and furious. And that's what I experienced personally. That's what I have experienced being family-centered or being you know, spouse-centered, relationship-centered. That when somebody else, when they want you to do something, well, then they'll use the guilt card. They'll use the manipulation card. They'll use the name-calling card. They'll use the I'm not going to talk to you card. That's what that stuff looks like. That's what that stuff looks like. So for me, it's just a very clear decision it's simple, but it's not easy, you know? It's simple because it's black and white, but it's not easy to make because, you know, I do struggle with that emotional attachment. You know what I mean? I do struggle with, you know, being family-centered in some moments and being principally centered in others. It's, it's, it's part of my journey. It's part of my rescripting. You know, you spend so many years repping something in a certain way you spend so many years with 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 certain types of beliefs that it does take time and energy in situations like this to kind of break out of that thinking and start going down a new path so that's the situation and i love it i do because man i i I talk about this with the folks that i interact with with the people i i see on my you know the, the tuesday classes that i do and it's like Creating joy in the face of circumstance. 
That's what I'm about. I want to be able to be in the fire. I want to be able to be, you know, feel the weight on me. And despite those external circumstances, I can create internal joy. I can create my own internal peace. It's not dependent on those forces and factors out there. Because I know what it's like to be a person who, who hinges their peace and their joy on the out there, on the external things. So what I'm about right now in this chapter of my life is creating that joy in the face of circumstance. So yes, I do enjoy this. I do enjoy the text messages that make my heart race, make my armpits sweat, make me second guess. Because they're opportunities. They're opportunities for me. And the reason why I'm sharing this with you all is because I just, it's, it's one of those things you may come up against it. You may experience it. You might have already have experienced it. When you say you're about something and somebody comes in from left field and they're like, oh, really? You're about this. Okay, we'll see. I'm going to test you. You know? So I, I like to give examples other than, you know, the situation I'm going through because maybe you just don't really can't relate to that. Maybe it's, you know, you don't have those situations of being formally family centered and now you're choosing to align with other other things. And so, you, you know, you get the pushback from family on things like you may not experience that. So here's another example. If you've ever been a person who's on a diet, you know, let's say you've done the whole 30 diet. That's been one that's that's been uh, trendy, you know, in the past couple of years. And the Whole30 diet basically uh, emphasizes whole foods, you know, eating whole foods and doing it for 30 days. And during those 30 days, you eliminate a bunch of stuff. You get rid of uh, sugar. I think you get rid of alcohol, things like that. So let's say that you said, you know what? I'm going to do the Whole30. I'm going to do the Whole30. From November 1 to November 30, it's Whole30 for me. Boom. You say that's what you're about. Well, the only time that it matters is when you have to prove it. So let's say during those 30 days is your best friend's wedding. Let's say you just planned it poorly and your best friend's getting married. And you know that if you were not on that whole 30, you'd be drinking it up. You'd be eating everything. You'd be going for seconds, thirds, fourths at the macaroni and cheese bar. You'd be pounding sugar like there's no tomorrow. You would be, be, be breaking every single rule of the Whole30. But you said you were about Whole30 right now. You said you were about your health. You said you were about healing whatever's going on in your body. You said you were about detoxing and cleansing. You said you were about taking a step in a positive, empowering, healthy direction for your body. Now you're being tested. Now you have a circumstance. Now you have an opportunity to choose. And, you know, I've, I've heard testimony from friends who've said they're, they're doing different diets or doing this and that. And then, oh, I forgot about the game this weekend. Oh, man, during the game, I normally drink like crazy or I normally eat like crap. So, man, I need to, uh, I need to go ahead and, and break. Yeah, I need to go ahead and break. And here's the reason why. Excuse number one, justification number two, rationalization number three. I go back to that statement I said at the beginning. The only time it matters is when you have to prove it. So whatever path you're on, whatever, whatever experience you say you want to have, just keep that in mind. You know, I love, man, I love the NBA. I'm a huge basketball fan. And my favorite player for many, many years was Kobe Bryant. You know, and I don't remember if Kobe Bryant ever said he was the greatest, but other people around him definitely said that he was the greatest. And all season long, you could talk about how great you are and you could tweet about it and you could say it in interviews and you could whisper it to your spouse at night like, I'm the greatest. I'm going to prove it tomorrow. I'm the greatest. But the only time it matters is when you have to prove it. And in the case of the NBA, the only time it matters is when you're in the finals, game seven of the finals and somebody else comes up and, you know, I'm, as a Lakers fan, it's like the Boston Celtics that come up and they're like, you're going to have to prove it today. You say you're the greatest. Okay, we'll see. That's the circumstance. That's life. That's the universe saying, oh, you say you're about this. All right, we're going to see. We're going to see. You say you're the greatest? Oh, we're going to see. You say you're principally centered? Okay, we're going to see. We're going to see just how principally centered you are, how convicted you are 
in that statement. And man, that shit is colorful. It is colorful. But you know what? It's how you get to those breakthrough moments. It's how you get on the other side and you say, wow, six months ago, I would have chosen otherwise. Shit. Six days ago, I would have chosen otherwise. But today, I chose to stand firm in who I am. Today, I chose to be aligned with my standards. Today, I chose to be aligned with my principles. Today, I chose to be aligned with myself and honoring myself. And it might fucking hurt. A lot of times it does. Not every time. But that's how diamonds are made. Diamonds are made under pressure. Diamonds aren't made just, you know, they don't grow them on bushes. You got to take coal and put that shit under pressure. A lot of pressure. Heat, pressure, energy, all that stuff. That's how diamonds are made. So if you're like, you know what? I'm playing to be as badass as a as a rock, as a just huge chunk of diamond, gleaming, valuable, worthy, extraordinary. If you say that's what you're playing for in any in any aspect of life, it doesn't have to be, you know, your big grand vision for your life. It might be that's what you're playing for in business. That's what you're playing for with your kids. That's what you're playing for with your body and in your health. Whatever it is, just know that it takes pressure to create diamonds. And just know it's when that pressure is being applied, that's when it matters. That's the only time it matters. So now I feel like I'm just simply restating the same thing over and over simply to restate it. I believe my point has gotten across and I would love to hear your thoughts on this. If you totally disagree with me, let me know. I'd love to hear why. I'd love to hear you know, your thoughts on it. Enlighten me. Help me to understand something new. If you agree with me and you want to share and expand and give your examples or whatever, awesome. Love to hear all of it. Email me, mattcbivens at gmail.com or hop over to my website, matthewbivens.com. You can find a contact form at the bottom of the homepage. Reach out. I love hearing from you. I appreciate the folks who've emailed me recently. I had intended to pull your names up on my computer so that I could say them. I apologize I didn't get to that. I was just too ready to jump on the mic tonight, honestly. And I'll, I'll, I'll share those names of recent emails and reviews on the next episode. So I believe in all of you. I love all of you. I appreciate all of you. My name is Matthew Bivens. Here's to you having it all. Peace.